Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you may be in the world. This evening I'd like you to join me as I challenge myself to create some perfect boho chic outfits with these jeans, a few tops and a few accessories. Now boho chic is a combination of bohemian, boho and hippie styles. It has repeatedly resurfaced in varying guises. Many elements of boho chic became popular in the late 1960s, which I remember only too well, and some date back much further, being associated, for example, with pre-Raphaelite women of the mid to late 19th century. And that aspect of it was the whole sort of diaphanous flowing, you know, sheer, lots, lots of fabric, but very fine fabric, you know, very fine muslin or silk. Sometimes a bit of tulle just to accentuate, you know, the shape of a dress or something. Anyway, I've seen boho come and go. Oh, I'm a poet and I don't know it. Boho, come and go, goodness me, how many times? Um, well, I did it in the 60s and early 70s. It resurfaced late 80s, early 2000s, and now. So I think this is the fourth re-emergence that, that I've witnessed of Boho. And Boho chic is me. This is how I feel the most comfortable. And this outfit is, is pretty much boho chic. It's got a beautiful silk top from Frame that has got gorgeous sleeves. I love the shape of these sleeves. It's sheer, which is fabulous when you get older because look, you know, you can, you can cover your arms up. You know, nobody sees the crepey skin, but they do see the outline of your arm. It's very, very flattering. I've just got this on with a little crop, little crop top underneath. Um, a layered silver necklace that was a Karl Lagerfeld number that I picked up a few years ago. The earrings are actually circa 1972 and were given to me by a good friend in the theatre as a first night present. If you can see them there. This little crochet bag I picked up for $25 from Tarje a couple of months ago. And it's just fabulous. I mean this this is so this is so right for Boho, you know, the little crochet bag with a bound handle. It's got a little cotton lining. It's got a shoulder strap. You know, you can get your phone in and the bare essentials and gorgeous. Oh, and the shoes. I don't think this particular style is still available, but look, you can always find things like this on eBay. And there is no way I could walk in heels that high, but wedges, yes, absolutely. And they have the same footbed as ordinary Crocs. Incredibly comfortable. Nearly all the shoes I wear are Crocs, but I don't have any of the clogs. I think they're called clogs, aren't they? There are so many styles that Crocs do, you would not believe it. They, they get a bad rap sometimes. And while I don't find the clogs sort of aesthetically pleasing, for people who are on their feet all day, they're great. I've spoken to many nurses on my many visits to hospital and they just said they've just been my saving grace, honestly. So, you know, if, if comfort is your thing at work, you go for it. What else is there? The jeans, these are frame jeans. And although I love those jeans that I got from Tarjay, that were $50. These were from Frame and these are around $300. But this denim is just so 
Oh wow, I wish you could feel it. It is so soft. And these have a frayed, frayed edge, which I think you can see if I stand back here. And I thought I'd wear boot cut jeans because then it gives you the option of, you know, wearing a looser top or a tighter fitted one. You know, if you've got wide leg pants on, particularly, well, wide leg jeans, particularly if you're short, then you don't want to wear a great big, you know, oversized t-shirt or something and look totally swamped by the whole thing. You need to wear something more fitted. But just a little bit of a boot cut like this are really versatile and they don't restrict you so much on the shape of your top. So this is look number one. And sorry, there's a mirror just, just over here. And you know, it's very early 70s. It really is. I mean, I, I can remember dressing like this so well. I really can. Apart from the Crocs, the Crocs I didn't have but I would have worn something similar because wedge sandals, I had to look this up before I started filming this video because I had no idea who first designed the modern wedge sandal. And it was actually developed by Italian shoemaker Salvatore Ferragamo during the 1930s. Ferragamo designed stylish trend-setting shoes for Greta Garbo, Paulette Godard, Claudette Colbert, Claire Booth Luce, the Duchess of Windsor, and many other women. And wow, what a list of women that is. I mean, so we have Salvatore Ferragamo to thank for the modern day wedge. And I mean, He's no longer with us. He passed in 1960 and his company is now, well, it's not his company anymore, but it's now called Ferragamo, isn't it? They've taken the Salvatore off. A bit like Yves Saint Laurent. You know, it's just called Saint Laurent now, which I have sort of mixed feelings about. I can understand the company sort of wanting to move on, but then I think it's sort of nice to honour the name of the person who, who founded the whole thing, you know? Anyway, that's just me. This is my first outfit. So what do you think? If you were around in the early 70s, you would probably address similar to this as well. The boot cut jeans would have been much more flared. They'd have been similar at the top because they used to flare out from the knee, but they used to be you know, about at least like this. And then you had pants called loon pants that were like this. Again, a flare, but really exaggerated flare. And those weren't in a denim, they were in a cotton, fairly thick cotton. And loon pants were oh, huge, absolutely the thing. Everybody had a pair of loon pants. Before I forget, I put a poll out on my, you know, community post thing to see if you wanted me to do shorter, concise videos or stick with the sort of variety of ones I do now. Some are longer, some are shorter. Because I want to know what suits you guys best. I mean, people are time poor these days, I know. And once you get monetized, there are adverts, etc., etc. So let me know and Whatever suits you best is what I'll do. So I'd better get a move on. I'll be back with a second boho look. Okay, so this is a fairly similar look. I know you've seen this top before. Lace was a very, very big thing then. It was very on trend. It was very much part of the boho vibe. And again, this sort of sheerness bangles, but sort of obligatory, you know, and I've kept these chains fairly short so they don't interfere with my microphone, but usually you'd wear a few long layered necklaces. 
crochet bag. They were hugely popular. I mean, you know, a massive trend, the crochet bag. And it was a bit chilly in the evening. And you wanted something to put on. I mean, you have to remember, boho was very over the top back then. You know, people were a lot braver in the way they dressed. You know, the whole thing was about not conforming to society. You didn't want to look how other people looked. The last thing you wanted to do was look like your parents. So, same sandals, same jeans, which I'm keeping on for all the outfits. This lace top, which I really love, the fabric is very, very delicate. It's got little flowers here in a border, a border just down here. And this is a really nice metallic Topshop blazer. I actually bought it in a, oh, when was it? It was a local design school actually in Sydney. They were having their end of their sort of graduation, you know, runway show. And they had a, a sort of a, you know, a little area where they were selling secondhand clothing. And I bought it from there for $20. And it's just gorgeous. I mean, it's just so 1970s. It's fabulous. And yeah, this would have been an evening look. Like I said, you wanted to look like anybody but everybody else. It was all about looking unique. You know, finding something different. You always used to be on the hunt for a different look. You know, a different bag or a different top or... But the only thing that really used to stay the same, which is why I'm doing it for the purposes of this video, are the jeans. You know, jeans or loon pants or maxi skirts. But, you know, I'm talking about sort of spring fashion here, which I suppose you could relate to fall in the Northern Hemisphere. So we're not quite into summer yet. And that's really when the maxi skirts and the maxi dresses emerge. You know, we're just coming out of winter now. So jeans are the thing. But I love this blazer. I mean, the texture of it is just beautiful. And textures also were so important. You know, they really were. And people used to think a lot more, you know, about what they looked like, you know, the, the pieces that they picked for their outfit for the evening. I'm not saying people don't, you know, young people don't think about it at all now, but I don't think people now are so focused on looking so different to everybody else. Do you know what I mean? I hope this is making sense. Anyway, this is a sort of a night out, you know, on the town. Popping into a disco, maybe. Oh, and the disco balls. Oh, my goodness. Just amazing. Now this is something perhaps more suited for a yeah a real real nightclub you know where people used to get dressed up. This this is the sort of thing you'd wear after the show in the theatre. You know there was a oh, there's a local nightclub about a five minute walk from the theatre, and you know you you just stick a pair of jeans on top like this metallics were huge i mean they, they really were it you know you'd probably have a, just a little shoulder bag like this just a plain black leather bag there wasn't so much focus on bags then really not for younger people anyway and this again is perfect with the blazer So you've got a nice mix of metallics here. Sorry, my hair's at that 
awkward length where it doesn't want to stay back there and it doesn't want to stay down here. Anyway, there you go. Mix of metallics. Bangles again. Bit of bling was obligatory. Had to do the bit of bling. I've kept the same earrings on. Same Crocs. Because when you'd been on your feet all evening doing a show, you really needed comfortable shoes. Sadly, Crocs weren't available then, but comfortable wedges were, and that's what I used to wear. I used to get mine from Russell and Bromley, I think. Anyway, that's another sort of out on the town type outfit, very similar, just a different top. And this top was actually from Topshop, talking about top. Shame, isn't it, that they're no more, that they've just been sort of absorbed as a label into the ASOS, you know, family of, oh, goodness knows how many labels. I can remember when ASOS started, wow. You know, it was quite quite a thing when they started. Yeah, that's the sort of handbag you used to put down, you know, on the floor in the middle. You know, you used to have this little pile of handbags and you used to sort of dance around the bags. Very funny. I mean, looking back on it, it all sounds and feels uh, very strange. And it feels like a million years ago. Okay, so I think we're done with the jacket now. Let's have a look at... Let's have a look at something a bit more casual. So this is a sort of a weekend, you know, outfit look where you might be going out, you know, meet your friends to go around the shops, that sort of thing. Straw baskets, or oh, raffia. This, this one's actually... Raffia, yeah, it is raffia. Things very similar to this. This is a great size, I love this bag. I like the black. The black so it's even got feet. And it's one of those bags that has got, you know, the top that you can do that with. It has a label, Izoa. I bought this from eBay for, oh, I don't know, $30-ish. Taken the blingy bangles off, left the silver chains on. You tended to leave necklaces and chains and things were a sort of a, Almost a permanent fixture, do you know what I mean? They became your signature almost. Anyway, straw bag. Short sleeve top, loose, fine material again. Nice fluted sleeves. There's a little bit of smocking there. I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up. On the shoulders, which is quite nice. Oh, goodness, I've had this top for, well, not since the 70s, but for a very long time. And this was the look, you know, round town on a Saturday afternoon. So, what's next? OK, so this is another favourite, sort of wearing a, a short dress over jeans. Particularly seeing as, you know, if you had short dresses in your wardrobe, you know, to wear them on their own, short dresses weren't really the thing anymore. They'd had their moment in the 60s, and by the early 70s, you know, 71, 72, they were becoming a little bit passe, but we all had them. And, you know, what do you do but wear them as a long top over a pair of jeans. Especially if they were like this mango dress. I don't know if you remember, I bought it in a haul a few months, two or three months ago. This has got that same sheer fabric, nice bit of volume, you know, in the sleeves. Let me pull those up. 
The only thing I don't like about this dress, and it's easily solved, is it has a it has a polyester lining which I'll take out because you know I just polyester in this weather just doesn't work. Sorry, yeah. need to adjust the mic. Anyway, you'd have worn something like this with a crochet bag. This is the look, the short dress over jeans. Same thing again, you need a bit of volume. Sleeves were important. You know, they were they needed to make a statement. So there you go. Okay, second pair of croc sandals. Very slightly different from the other ones. But the same nice strappy summer sandal ankle strap, they feel really secure on. They've got the croc footbed, incredibly comfortable, non-slip. And yeah, what can I say? I mean, you can wear them casually. You could wear those with a smart dress to go out in the evening. And five for nothing, I am no more. I am now approximately five foot three inches. Okay, so another major accessory in the 1970s that was almost compulsory. I mean, you just had to have at least a few of them was the scarf, particularly the skinny scarf like this one. And as you can see, they used to be worn as belts. I don't remember people, well, certainly that I knew, which, were, well, they were all theatre people, but we all used to wear scarves as belts. And I've just popped on another silver chain, which you would occasionally love this one. It's a little, um, Okay, I've shown you this one before. Hold on. The kiss lock works. And it's actually a proper little bag. Get a few tic tacs in there. And while I was getting changed, I just grabbed this and I thought, wow. You know, if this Chanel 22 had been around in the 70s. Wouldn't it have suited this look perfectly? I mean, it's just so, it's so boho, which is probably why I love it so much. I mean, God, it goes with the outfit fabulously. Anyway, talking of outfits, I've got another one that I want to show you with a particularly interesting top. I'll be back. Okay, so this blouse is actually from ASOS really doesn't look like it, does it? It looks more like a vintage piece. And the reason I chose it for this video is because I used to wear a lot of vintage pieces. And I used to wear them a lot. So they got washed a lot. And unfortunately, vintage fabric doesn't hold up very well. And, you know, they didn't used to last too long. And I have absolutely oh I actually have one piece of vintage fabric left that's packed away somewhere anyway this was ASOS when ASOS started they used to do very unusual things like this I mean I'll show you a close-up of this it really is a nice blouse shirt whatever you want to call it and you see the brooch there I put on the bow this, this is the thing that we used to do, you know, like wearing scarves as belts. I mean, they were supposed to go around your neck, but, you know, which we did do sometimes, but then we'd sort of tie them in a loose knot, you know, lower down, like, you know, like this one that I know you've seen before. You know, you'd sort of wear it, you know, not in a traditional way. Same with brooches. You know, my mother used to wear a brooch sort of pinned here on a suit jacket lapel. I used to wear a brooch, you know, there, or just 
somewhere different, you know, the whole thing was rebelling against the, you know, the way you're supposed to wear things. And just getting back to the jewellery thing, like these silver necklaces. I mean, the reason you often used to wear one piece like this all the time, apart from it being your signature piece, was it was probably the only decent piece of jewellery that you had. I mean, this is when I was working in the theatre, so, you know, we got paid peanuts. I mean, we just got paid next to nothing. The wages were appalling. So if you had one decent piece of jewellery like this, it never left your neck. I mean, you know, you'd wear it for just months and months on end. Anyway, with this, you'd probably carry a little crochet bag like that. And I love this top. I really do. It's glorious. It's in a sort of a, it's almost like a thin taffeta. I mean, how times change. Assos certainly doesn't sell things like this anymore. And I think, I seem to remember this cost me the princely sum of six British pounds. Anyway, that's what I'd probably change into going out for a meal after the theatre. You see, the way it was, and another reason you wore jeans like this all the time is because you used to have a few tops hanging up in the wardrobe, a few bags, spare pair of shoes, you know, a, a bit of a glitzy jacket if you were going out to a club, just in case you were going out after the show. But the jeans were always, you know, what you went to the theatre in and part of the uniform wherever. So that's what it was like in the theatre. You know, in the wardrobe department, we used to keep a little bit of our own wardrobe, just in case. Anyway, this is the sort of thing that, you know, I'd wear to work at the theatre, just white tee, jeans again, same necklace because that's all I had. Same with these earrings. I can remember when Corin bought me these earrings. I mean, the only earrings I had apart from these, that sounds like terrible, doesn't it? I'll get the violin out and pass the hat round. Seriously, the only other earrings I had were the sleepers that I had, you know, put in when I had my ears pierced. So, hence, I just, I wore these all the time. Love them, absolutely love them. I mean, their goodness, how old now, 28, 48? Ah, uh, 52 years old, goodness me. Anyway, this was a very sort of, this was a look for a T-shirt then. You know, a little bit of volume again in the sleeves. Gathered round here. Very standard look, bling gone, no bling for work, so if you were saying you didn't want to catch fabric on anything. Also, obviously, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been wearing this ring either, but, you know. Anyway, I think we just have one more piece, and that's it, we're done. Okay, so this was probably the sort of thing that I would have worn to a first night party, and it was probably the only time I used to take a dress into work. Um, and usually, as you can, this one's not quite a maxi, and this is quite appropriate actually because I used to do nearly all my washing at work because, well, I was, I was rarely home. I mean, I spent, I don't know, 95% of my time at the theatre, I would think. And first night was always a rush. I mean, you've got the actors and the actresses to deal with the whole, you know, nerves calming everyone down. And so, you know, it'll be a very last minute thing, you know, and you get your dress out and you go, oh God, it's got some makeup on. So you quickly put it in the washing machine in the interval, you know, go and do your bit and then come back up to the wardrobe, take it out of the washing machine and put it in the dryer. and everything used to shrink and this is a pretty pretty good representation of what would happen you know you'd have a dress that was a perfect length and then suddenly it was too short anyway you'd put it on because it was the only thing that you had apart from your jeans and a 
few tops and you know whatever you'd put the blingy bracelets back on you'd use a scarf as a belt you'd put a brooch on there you get your little bag that you used to go clubbing with your black sandals you'd keep your one decent piece of jewellery on and that was it and then you'd race up to the bar because there was free food and boy did that go quickly anyway those are some of my 1970s outfits when I was a little bit more boho than I am now and yeah I hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it could you please do me a favour, hit that subscribe button, please, I'd really appreciate it. And if you'd like to do me another favour, thumbs up would be fabulous. I'd love you to leave a comment down under because I love replying to them. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. A bientôt mes amis, au revoir et bonsoir.